That's what we're going to talk about. Yeah. So, topology. What is a topology, by the way? Let me ask you guys a question. Do you know? From your networking class, a topology is? Topology, that's pretty much the same thing as? Like I said, architecture and how various elements <coughs> of a network are put together to function. Right? So that's pretty much what we mean by the topology. And the simplest topology we're going to talk about is called the uh, screened subnet uh, firewall architecture. So screened subnet firewall architecture. So we'll look at these things in terms of uh, what constitutes the topology. So the elements, right? So in terms of the elements, so elements like ooh. so one firewall. So there, there is going to be only one firewall. And then that firewall divides your network into something internal to be protected and then the external right so internal network and external network and this one sounds very familiar because right what was the other name for this do you remember this was also called it starts with b yeah, so we called it actually border firewall. We also called it uh, border firewall, okay? So, I mean, you already know what this is. And if I simply draw the topology itself, I mean, basically you have firewall here, right? And then the firewall divides the network into half, right? One is the external, the other was uh, internal. Then what about the advantages of this, right? So uh, advantages of something like this. So advantages could be, uh, first of all, simple, right? Only one firewall, so very simple. Another one will be, because it's simple, it's going to be inexpensive, right? Cheap, inexpensive, inexpensive, and then, uh, but it has a problem, a little bit of problem. I mean, so drawbacks, what are the drawbacks for this, right? So let's think about this a little bit. So what could be a drawback for this type of thing? All right, yes? One point of failure. That's right. If the firewall goes down, you're done, right? So single point of failure right there. So something like, so one point of failure, single point of failure. Actually, uh, in the literature, I think they use this more, single point of failure. So that's not very good. And then another thing to think about is uh, behind the firewall, right, behind the firewall, everybody's uh, treated the same way pretty much, right? So if I draw something here behind the firewall, let's say you have a sensitive server like HR server containing all the uh, employee information or something like that. And then you have uh, just regular host like Windows XP 
uh, used by one of the workers, right? So basically, if this guy decides to be a bad person, there is no protection between your sensitive server and the end users. You, you can get connected directly. So that's a bad idea, <laughs> right? You want to have an extra layer of protection. So do you guys remember this idea called uh, defense in depth? Right? So the more layers of protection you have, probably the better. So, uh, so that's another drawback. No, no protection from malicious insider. From a malicious insider. Right? So that's a very good. And For something like this, um, you still have to think about what's involved in terms of the interfaces, right? Uh, in this case, the firewall uh, has to have at least two different interfaces. What I mean by an interface is, I mean, I think we talked about this, but Physically speaking, it's a network card, pretty much. So your connection to the outside world, right? So you need two interfaces, uh, meaning you need two network cards for this to create a firewall like this. So uh, in Linux, we refer to them as like ETH or something like that. Ethernet, right? ETH, zero, and then another interface, the network card something like uh, ETH1, right? So for something like this, something to remember <clears throat> right now. I'm going to ask you uh, in an exam, for example, how many interfaces would you need in this screen subnet firewall architecture? You should be able to say. And I said two. Right. Why? Because just like what's going on at your home router, right? One needs to be facing, right, uh, the internet. You have to belong that network somehow, right? In order for you to be able to do that, you have to have a compatible uh, IP address. So, for example, let's say uh, this external network. We can represent it as. Let's say this is a big cloud, like internet. Internet. <coughs> and you have some IP address, right? But the thing is, IP address, again, this is why your knowledge of uh, ISD 220 is very critical in something like this, because you have to build on those uh, ideas you learned. So. Uh, you, just as a brush up on what you learned, for example, let's say this IP is 77921111 something, right? And actually, instead of saying that, a proper way of saying it is 77921111.1. Okay, so when I say something like that, right? When you look at that IP address, especially uh, IP address is starting with this num these numbers, right? I have a name for it. Well, how do I call them? Collectively, everything starting with that IP uh, subnet, right? So we can say. This number, three numbers, right, 7792111, that represents a subnet, pretty much. And because it's a unique identifier, we also call it a subnet ID, okay, subnet ID. So basically, in order for your network interface to be able to communicate with anything in that subnet, right, you have to have a compatible IP. Does that make sense? Right? So your IP has to also start with something like 77921111, right? 
So when I say 779211 dot whatever, X, right? Whatever IP starting with 779211, a better way of saying that is actually 7792111 subnet. And another way of uh, basically saying that more formally is by using zero. So whenever I say 7792111.0, that simply refers to the entire subnet that begins with those three numbers. Does that make sense? To be compatible with the subnet 7792111, I need to have an IP that starts, I mean, for this interface of the firewall in particular, I need to have an IP also that starts with the same subnet ID, right? So that's going to be 7792111, and you pick the number basically, right? Sometimes this is provided by your uh, internet service provider, right? Comcast or uh, any other companies, Atlantic, Broadband, whatever. So let's say you're given uh, 60 uh, or 6. Let's say it's a 6. So you're good because your IP is compatible with that subnet, right? So now you can communicate with the people there. But you have another interface, right, here. And this has to belong to another subnet because now the main role of the firewall was what? To divide your network into two different things, right? So if you had the same subnet here, if you assign something like 7792111, let's say 10 or something, that's a bad idea because, I mean, this part of your network still belongs to the same subnet. You don't want to do that. That's not what the firewall is doing, right? So you have to isolate your own network, your protected network, from the external network. So that's why you don't want to do this. You have to have a different subnet ID, your own internal subnet ID. So typically for something like that, we use this uh, reserved subnet ID, right? So uh, you are familiar with this already probably because you get to see this so many times, right? So that's actually something like what? 192, 168, and then whatever, right? So in our case, for the subnet ID, you pick what subnet ID you want for your own topology. So, I mean, I'll just use zero. What, you can use other numbers, but can you have something like 256 there instead of zero because the range has to be in between zero and what? 255, right? So, so I happen to have zero. So 192.168.0, that's my subnet ID. And then, <coughs> For this interface, I still need to pick a unique host ID, which is, I mean, usually they just use one for that because it's kind of uh, representing the entire subnet there, right? That interface, pretty much, right? So now, whatever machines behind that firewall belonging to this new subnet I just created, everybody has to uh, use a compatible IP. In this case, 192.168, the subnet is zero, right? And I'll pick a number, I cannot have the same number, right? So three, 192.168.05. But can you have repeating IP addresses in your network, the protected network? The answer is, of course, no, right? Otherwise, how would the packets know where to go, right? If you have multiple hosts with the same IP. Yeah, I mean, that's not going to happen. So, so this is the very basic of, I mean, what you need to build your uh, file architecture, your own file architecture, because whatever is coming up after this is simply an extension of what, what this is. So if you understand this concept, then the rest of it will become much easier to understand. Okay? So, now, moving on. <clears throat>